Hi, I wanted to take a minute to discuss a subject that came up in a question from one of my Discord users. Basically, they are asking how can I use stored procedures in filament? And believe it or not, this is a more common situation than you would think, because we don't always have ownership of the database. Maybe there is an administrator that will restrict the access and operations on the database to just stored procedures. So I'm going to show you how I would approach this situation, but keep in mind that this is just my way of solving it. And if you have a better solution, please share it in the comments. And while you're down there, don't forget to click the like button. It's free and it really helps. So what I have here is a simple filament project with one resource for administrating users. And it's very simple. You can create new users with this form or you can edit users as well. And also you can delete users. But all of the crude operations, create, update and delete are being handled by store procedures. Let me show you. Here we have a user resource class with a simple form and a simple table. And this resource also has two pages, create user page and edit user page. Let's take a look at the create user page first. To take control of the creation process of a record, you can use a function called handle record creation. This method will receive an array of data coming from the form that has already been validated. And here I'm using DB statement in order to call the SP insert user store procedure, passing in uh, various uh, parameters and also I have an out parameter called last ID. This is going to give me back the newly created record ID. And on these parameters I'm passing in the name, the email and also the password. Once the stored procedure completes I can get the latest inserted ID by using DB scalar select and the name of the parameter that I defined as out in the stored procedure. And by using DB scalar, I'm getting a single value out of the statement instead of an object. And finally, the handle record creation is expecting you to return the newly created model. So all I have to do is find that model using the last inserted ID and then return it like this. And this is how the stored procedure looks. Keep in mind that I'm using MySQL for this example. So the implementation of the stored procedure may change depending on the database engine that you use. All I'm doing is receiving three parameters as input and then outputting one parameter, the last ID. And then I'm using those three parameters to do an insert to the user's table, passing the parameters as values, and then setting the last ID parameter to last insert ID. Now to edit a user, the process is very similar. The only difference is that the handle record update is going to give you the current record model as a parameter, along with the form data in an array. So the first thing I'm doing is again calling DB statement to call the store procedure and this store procedure will take three parameters. The first parameter is the ID of the record that I'm updating, which I can get from the record using get key. And then using data, I can get the name and the email that have been updated in the form. And then using record refresh, we take the fresh data from the database put it back into the model and then return the updated model like this. And this is the implementation of the stored procedure, taking the ID, name and email, setting the user's name and email in the update statement and then scoping that update using the ID. And finally, to delete a user, you probably have to implement this in two places. One would be the table if you decide to add a delete action to the table and the other one would be in the edit page because we have a delete action here. In the edit user page, we have a method called get header actions. And here we have a pre-built delete action from filament. And what we can do is use the action method of this delete action to customize what happens when we click the delete button. In this case, I'm using a callback function that is injecting the user and also passing the action itself, which is very important. First, I'm using DB statement again to call the SP delete user store procedure, passing in just the record ID. And then this is the important part. You need to return action success because this action success method is going to send a notification to the user in the UI 
saying the record was deleted and also is going to redirect you from the edit page back to the list of users. If you don't do this, what you get is a 404 exception on the edit user page. And the implementation of the delete store procedure is very simple. All we do is take an ID as a parameter and we use that to run a delete from users query. And if you decide to add a delete action to your table, you need to use that same action method on your delete action and then inject the user record and the delete action as well. Then call the delete store procedure, passing the record key and then calling action success. And in this case, it's not going to redirect you anywhere. It's just going to show a nice notification letting you know that the delete was successful. And that is how I would approach using store procedures in Filament. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to click the like button, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one.